Hello students, how are you all? I hope you all are doing well in your studies. So, today I am here to start with the chapter 3 of history and the name of this chapter is Delhi Sultanat. So, get the ball rolling. Historical sources, the slave dynasty 1206 to 1290, the Khilji dynasty 1290 to 1320, case study, the Tughlaq dynasty 1320 to 1440. The invasion of Taimur, the Sayyids and the Lodis, 1414 to 1526, administration under the Delhi Sultanate. History terms, Sultanate, a kingdom ruled by a Sultan, Chalisa, a selected group of 40 nobles, Sijta, a custom in which a person had to kneel and touch the ground with his forehead before the Sultan. The period between 1206 and 1525 CE in the history of India is known as the period of the Delhi Sultans. As many as five ruling dynasties dominated the scene during this period. They were those of the slaves, the Khiljis, the Tughlaqs, the Sayyids and the Lodis. In 1206, Muhammad Ghori was murdered and his Indian possessions fell under the control of his slave and military journal Kutubuddin Abak. With this began the rule of slave dynasty and that of the Delhi Sultans. Now it's time for connect to history. The defeat of Prithvira Chauhan in the second battle of terrain in 1192 CE laid the foundation of Muslims rule in India. Now, historical sources. As regards the Sultanate period 1206 to 1526, we have no paucity of historical sources, various court, chronicles, travelers' accounts, and historic buildings come to our help. Court chronicles, histories, or Tuarik, written by court chronicles of various Delhi Sultans form an important source about these times. Among them, Amir Khusrau Tughlaq Nama and Tariqi Alai, Ziyaduddin, Barani's Tariq Firozi Shahi, Futuhati Firuj Shahi by the Sultan himself, that is Firoz Shah, Yaya bin Ahmad's Tariq Si Mubarak Shahi and Makzari e Afghan, by Namatula through a good ideal of flight on the personality and main event of the different Delhi Sultans. Travelers account. Many foreign travelers who visited India during this period 1206 to 1526 also throw light on the personality and reign of different Sultans. Among them the name of Ibn Battuta, Marco Polo and Nikata Afnasi are well known. Historical buildings. Historical buildings of this period like Kutub Minar, Kuwati Islam Masjid, Alai Darwaza, Tomb of Gyasuddin Tughlaq, Tughlaq Abad, Hoskas, Firosha Kotla, Lodi Tomb, etc. themselves speak of the artistic taste of different Delhi Sultans. The Slave Dynasty 1206 to 1290, Kutubuddin Abak 1206 to 1210. The first Sultan of the dynasty was Kutubuddin Abak. He was a journal of Muhammad Ghori and ruled over the territories conquered by Ghori in India. After Ghori's death, Kutubuddin began to rule as an independent ruler. Kutubuddin was a kind-hearted and generous man. Due to his generosity, he was called Lak Baksh or giver of lakhs. He built the Kuwaitul Islam Mosque in Delhi and started the construction of the Qutub Minar. El Tutmish 1211 to 1236. Shamsuddin El Tutmish was a slave and a son in law of Abak. He is regarded as the real founder of the Delhi Sultanate. He shifted the seat of governance from Lahore to Delhi owing to which Delhi came to occupy the premier position as the capital of Hindustan. El Tutmish 
had to contend with many rebellions but he was successful in defeating the rebels and executed most of them he consolidated the delhi sultanate by extending his control up to the indus and the whole of multan and sindh towards the east he extended his control over lakhnauti bengal and bihar he brought under his control the rajput territories of bayana ajmer and sambhar iltutmish created an entire new class of ruling elite which was called the chalisa or the group of 40 the death of iltutmish was followed by a decade of political instability in delhi which saw acute struggle among the nobles razia sultana 1236 ce to 1240 ce before his death iltutmish nominated his daughter razia as his successor razia sultan was unique in the history of the delhi sultanate She was the first and the last woman Muslim ruler of the medieval world. She was a brave, intelligent and just woman. She possessed all the qualities of a great ruler. She was an excellent horse woman. She dressed like a man and personally led her army in a battle. But the nobles did not like the idea of being ruled by a woman. A chronicler of age Minhaj E Siraj recognized that Razia was more able and qualified than all her brothers still he bought that the queen's rule went against the deal social order created by god in which women are supposed to be subordinates to men ultimately she was killed in 1240 CE After the death of Razia until the accession of Balban many kings came to the throne of these Nasiruddin Mahmud ruled for a long time from 1246 to 1266 none of the rulers however could provide stability to the empire all these kings were mere puppets in the hands of powerful nobles Giyasuddin Balban 1266 to 1287 Balban's ascendancy to the throne marked the beginning of an era which was characterized by centralized governance he adopted the Iranian theory of kingship according to this theory the king was divine and was a shadow of god on earth and hence must be obeyed the king was answerable only to god he adopted the title of zil-e-ilahi meaning shadow of god it was inscribed in the coins issued by him he introduced the persian custom of sajda and paibos he followed a policy of blood and iron and crushed any rebellion with a heavy hand he kept the mobility under strict control and created a strong system to keep them in check Balban brought about reforms in the internal administration he enforced law and other and reorganized the army he constructed roads and made arrangements for interstate traffic the judiciary was strengthened he reformed the tax collection process provincial governors were frequently transferred However, he could not successfully suppress the rebellion in Bengal under Tugril. Balban's son died while defending the northwest frontier. This affected Balban to such an extent that he died in 1287. The public order of the country was threatened with anarchy after Balban's death. The slave dynasty of Balban came to an end within 3 years of his death. In 1290, Jalaluddin Khilji the governor of samana occupied delhi by military crop and declared himself as a sultan the khilji dynasty 1290 to 1320 jalaluddin khilji 1290 to 1296 ce the founder of the khilji dynasty jalaluddin khilji was already very old when he ascended the throne Moreover he had to spend most of his time suppressing internal rebellions in 1296 CE he was assassinated by his nephew Alauddin Khilji who became the sultan Alauddin Khilji 
1296 to 1316 CE, Alauddin Khalji was the most powerful ruler of Khalji dynasty. Soon after coming to power, he set about his goal of establishing an all India empire, expansion of the empire. Alauddin conquered Gujarat and Malwa. This gave him control over the western seaport between 1301 and 1303. He campaigned in Rajasthan and captured the forts of Ranthambore and Chittor from the Rajputs. Thereafter, he sent a large army towards the south under his trusted general, Malik Kafur. Malik Kafur defeated the Yadavas, Kakatiyas, Hoyasalas and the Pandyas. The king so defeated were allowed to continue as ruler but they had to pay tributes to Sultan and acknowledge his over lordship. Economic measures. Alauddin ordered the measurement of all land under cultivation. It was divided into different categories according to fertility. The land tax Kharaj was fixed accordingly. He kept a strict check on the nobles and did not allow them to collect any additional taxes. He also were asked to charge the rate fixed by the Sultan. Whoever was taught charging even a little extra or cheating with weights were punished severely. Reforms in the army. He was able to maintain a large standing army. He paid his soldiers in cash. He started branding that horses to prevent the substitution of good horses by inferior ones. Case study. The Tughlaq dynasty 1320 to 1414. The Tughlaq dynasty lasted for close to a hundred years. It produced two powerful sultans, Muhammad bin Tughlaq and Fidros Shah Tughlaq. Gayasuddin Tughlaq 1320 to 1324 CE. Gyasuddin Tughlaq was the first ruler of the dynasty. He was an efficient military commander. He suppressed rebellions and consolidated the Sultanate. He was succeeded by Jona Khan, who took the title of Muhammad bin Tughlaq. Muhammad bin Tughlaq, 1325-1351 CE. Muhammad bin Tughlaq was a very powerful ruler. Ibn Battuta, the Moroccan traveler gives a lot of information about his reign. He gives the reference that the Sultan had great ideas and plans that failed because the common people could not understand. Some of his plans were as follow. Taxation in the Dob To increase revenue collection, the Sultan raised the land tax in the Dob region at a time when the entire region was in the grip of famine. This caused widespread discontent among the peasants of the area. Due to this, Sultan had to take his orders back. Transfer of capital. Tughlaq decided to shift the capital of the empire from Delhi to Devgiri, which he renamed Dalatbad. Most historians believe that there were two reasons for it. A. The Sultan felt that he would be able to control and administer the empire better from Dalatbad since it was located in the center of the empire. B. The Mongols were a constant threat to Delhi. Dalatabad would be safe from Mongol attacks. However, he was forced to return to Delhi as it was too difficult to control Delhi while sitting in Dalatabad. Introduction of a Token Currency Muhammad bin Tughlaq issued token currency in copper and eoresis, which were backed by silver and gold kept in the treasury. The token currency as introduced by Tughlaq failed because he could not prevent forging of the new coins. The state suffering huge loss because land revenue was collected in copper and brass coins. There was such abundance of these new coins that their value depreciated. This even caused disruption of trade and commerce. So, the Sultan was forced to cancel the token coins. He redeemed 
the token coins with gold and silver coins. Karachil expedition to secure the northern frontiers of the Sultanate, Muhammad bin Tughlaq sent an army to the Kangra region, modern Himachal Pradesh. After annexing this region, the army proceeded towards Tibet. It suffered heavy loss of lives. Firosha Tughlaq 1351-1388 Firosha Tughlaq was Muhammad bin Tughlaq's cousin. He ruled according to Islamic laws. He granted land to Ulemas and became powerful. He built many canals, tanks, wells, hospitals and rest houses. He founded the cities of Jaunpur, Firozpur, Firozabad and Hisar Firoza. The Invasion of Taimur In 1398 CE, Amir Taimur or Tamerlane, Taimur, the lame. A great conqueror from Central Asia invaded India and brought great mysteries to the people. His main aim to attack India was to loot its rich booty. On his way back, he plundered many cities and took away from India huge wealth in the form of gold, silver, jewels, etc. He also carried with him a large number of Indian artisans, stone, cutters, and carpenters. He left Delhi in ruins. Taimur stayed for a fortnight at Delhi. He marched to Merit, Haridwar, Nagarkot, and Jammu, and then left for Afghanistan. Before leaving India, Taimur appointed Khizr Khan as his viceroy at Lahore. After his going back to his country, there arose a great bitterness between Hindus and Muslims, which meant a severe blow to the Tughlaq dynasty. The North India could not recover from this blow for a quite long time. This also opened the way for Baba's invasion of India, the Sayyids and the Lodis, 1440 to 1526. The rule of the Tughlaqs was followed by that of the Sayyids and the Lodis. Their rule lasted for the little more than a century from 1414 to 1526 CE. Sikandar Lodi 1489 to 1517 CE was one of the better known ruler of the Lodi dynasty. Under him, Delhi Sultanate extended from present day Punjab to Bihar. He was an able administrator and encouraged trade and commerce. He shifted the capital of the Sultanate from Delhi to Agra. Ibrahim Lodi 1517 to 1526 CE, was the last Sultan of the Delhi Sultanate. He has been described as an arrogant man who treated the Afghan noble with little respect. The nobles revolted and invited Babur. Taking advantage of the situation, Babur invaded India. He defeated and killed Ibrahim Lodi in the first battle of Padipat in 1526 CE. The Afghan nobles who were hoping the Baba would hand back the empire to them and return to Kabul, were disappointed. He stayed on and founded the Mughal rule in Delhi. Administration under the Delhi Sultanate The Sultan was considered as the head of Delhi Sultanate. His word was regarded as the law. He was also the chief executive, the highest judicial authority and the commander-in-chief of the army. Thus, he was an absolute ruler. He considered himself a part of the Islamic world. He was advised by the chief Qazi. The officials maintained all records and they also collected revenue. The wazir was a main figure in the administration. He was also the head of the revenue department. The bakshi was the paymaster of the army. The Qazi was a chief judge. He also gave advice to the Sultan on religious issues. Several other officers acted as the administrative heads of various departments. Justice was based on the holy law in the case of Muslims. The Sultan did not interfere in the tradition laws of the Hindus. Hindus were allowed to settle their cases in their own panchayat. 
the civil administration of the sultanate was a continuation of the existing one in the state the whole empire was divided into number of provinces the provinces were divided into sheikhs and sheikhs were divided into parganas or group of villages cities were divided into sectors each city was under the charge of two officials who were responsible to the chief city administrator the village was the smallest unit of the administration the patwari and mushrif or the accountant were the chief village officials villages were left undistributed to manage their own affairs independently the muqaddam or the headman was the head of the village administration ikta system under the system instead of paying salary to an officer in cash he was granted certain revenue arising from land or village this land grant was called ikta and their holders were called iktadars under the system from revenue which was collected a certain amount was kept as salary and another amount was to maintain soldiers for the sultan the officers were expected to keep detailed records of income and expenditure revenue the sultan took several measures to increase their revenue resources following were the chief sources of their revenue the khiraj or land revenue land revenue was a major source of their income it was generally realized at 1/5 of the total produce though the sultans like alauddin khalji and muhammad tughlaq raised it half of the total produce the jizya tax it was imposed only on the non muslim it is believed that children women and faqees were exempt from its payment it was realized at the rate of 10 to 14 takas depending on the prayer's income the octroi duty it was realized on the exchange and transportation of commercial goods import tax was levied on goods imported from other countries it was between 2% to 10% the zakat tax it was negligible tax supposed to be paid by all the muslim other sources of income other sources of income include state share in booty which was calculated at 1/5 of the plunder plus gifts tributes etc from the subordinate rulers so students it's time to wrap up the sultanate period 1206 to 1526 saw the rise of five dynasties the slaves khaljis tughlaq sayyids and lodi the slave dynasty ruled from 1206 to 1290 qutubuddin abak iltutmish razia and balban were the important rulers of this dynasty the khalji ruled from 1290 to 1320 alauddin khalji was the most ambitious and powerful sultan The Tughlaqs, thirteen twenty to fourteen fourteen, succeeded the Khaljis. Muhammad bin Tughlaq and Firoz Shah Tughlaq were the famous Tughlaq kings. The Sayyid ruler for a short time and were replaced by Lodis. Sikandar Lodi, fourteen eighty nine to fifteen hundred seventeen, and Ibrahim Lodi, fifteen hundred seventeen to fifteen hundred and twenty six, were the famous Lodi kings. So students it's time to take your leave we'll meet in the next class bye